For those who live in Georgia and South Carolina, you know there isn't much like high school football. For those on the sidelines coaching, it isn't just a game. It's their life's calling. To learn more about what makes those making the calls tick, I turn to a trio of longtime coaches from Southeast Georgia and the Low Country for a virtual roundtable conversation. Our panel includes Benedictine head coach Danny Britt. Britt is entering his 12th season as the Cadets head coach and is coming off his third state title at BC. Joining Britt is Tony Welch, who has coached all over Southeast Georgia. Now entering his second season as the head coach of the Jenkins Warriors, Welch's previous stops include stints at Memorial Day, Savannah High, and Claxton. Finally, representing the Palmetto State is Hilton Head High head coach B.J. Payne. Payne is going into his 11th season as the head coach for the Seahawks, where he's made six state playoff appearances. Payne also is a head coach in Ohio. Now, here's that roundtable conversation. Guys, I really appreciate all of you joining for this. I think this is a really interesting panel. We got a bunch of guys that, that know the game, know what they're talking about, are going to bring interesting perspectives. And so we'll start with this. All of you have been around the game a long time. You've had plenty of opportunities to get out of the game if you so chose, but you've you've stayed. What is it then that makes high school football so special and has kept you all going in a in a career path that can be a, a big a big grind? And and Danny, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, obviously it's uh, it is a grind. Um, there's there's a lot to it, but it's it's something that that I think everybody who stays in any amount of time has to love it. Um, you get to make a, a true impact uh, on kids and, and 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 grow them and make an impact on community. And um, you know, I often say to my kids, I can't control what happens in society, but I can somewhat control what happens inside the BC football program. And, uh, and, you know, so there is a, a feeling of that. And then, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a rush. It's a challenge every year. Um, I know the coaches could agree. We, you know, you wake up about a month ago, you wake up and it, it, it's a nervous feeling that's different than the rest of the year uh, to get this thing started and, and all of that, that that goes with it. So, you know, so many different aspects, but you know, and, and, and you feel like, uh, you know, for me personally, I feel like, you know, uh, God has, has led me, you know, in, in this path. And, you know, it's part of what I've been. Uh, I don't have a lot of talents. Uh, so the talent I do have, I, I feel like I need to use. Tony, BJ, whoever wants to, to add on to that, what, what is it that makes high school football special? I mean, not just from the coaching perspective, but there is, especially here in the South, and this is a, this is a, a part of the community. This is really one of the biggest sports in, in all of the country, in this part of the country particularly. What do you think it is that makes it that way? I think mean, Coach, uh, Coach Britt hit it on the head. I mean, we – we have an opportunity to change lives, you know, and uh, as much as we uh, think we're not, we really are. And I think uh, playing ourselves at a high level on uh, high school and college and those type of things, and then getting into the, the high school arena and, and understanding that uh, uh, our, our talents was given to us by God, and he'd afforded us opportunity to share it and, and, and do a good job with it. And uh, we're no better than the kids that we have or the coaches that we have. I am uh, uh, fortunate and blessed that, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've coached my son uh, in high school, and, and I got two grandsons that are playing for me right now. So I think uh, just looking at them and, and, and seeing uh, – their dads and then seeing them and, and how different they are, you know. <laughs> They're very different kids, things that I could I could do and, 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 and with their dads, I can't do it them. They're totally different. They accept it totally different. And that's a change in the times as well. But it's not about Friday nights or Saturday nights. It's about high schools, about kids. It's, it's you know, with, with everything going on in the world, you know, football or, or really any team sports, but I really think football brings us uh, together more of as a brotherhood that, you know, there's no race involved. 
You know, we're about one thing, about giving back, being respectful, and being uh, a family. And I think this gives us an outlet to share our talents that we can get along. We can do stuff together, and we can love each other. So that's that what drives us there. BJ? Yeah, I think just to piggyback on what the other coaches said is, you know, it's it's making that bond with the kids and and having that continue on, not only when they're in your program, but whenever they're – they leave your program. And I think a lot of people and, and, and coach brand coach Rolf to tell you that, you know, that they probably the same way as me. They got a lot of assistant coaches who think they want to be head coaches. And, and I, I promise I'm writing a book one day and it's going to be called. So you want to be a head coach because I think everybody thinks head coach and they think of the, the, the quote fame or notoriety that goes with that, but they don't understand you're the, you're the head football coach, but at the same time, you're the team psychologist. You know, you, you have many different hats you wear to where, you know, uh, you're the mentor to, to some players. You're the dad to some. You're the crazy uncle to some. You're like the big brother. Uh, there's so many different hats that you have to, you know, uh, so many different roles you have to play. And every kid's situation is unique. Every kid, just like being a teacher and an educator, every kid that walks in your classroom has a unique story to tell. And you have to take that and, and, and understand that and, and provide them the piece that they're missing. And, uh, you know, building those relationships is something that I've always hung my hat on that I think, you know, most coaches are successful. They understand that and the time commitment that that, that goes along with that. So, you know, just to go along with what the other coaches said, um, I think that's a huge part. All three of you guys have been involved in football for probably your whole life, but you've been in, in the roles that you're in now for, for a good amount of time as well. What's the biggest change you've seen, whether it's with the game or with the players or with just the sport in general from the time you entered as a head coach to, to now? BJ, we'll start with you this time, but what's what's the biggest change? What's the biggest adjustment you've had to make as a head coach? Um. I, I'm glad you asked me first because I actually spoke on this. Uh, you know, I just said something on Twitter uh, yesterday um, where, um, you know, I went to I went to lunch and, and the, the the place had on ESPN and ESPN2 and, and Cornhole was playing on the one and Ultimate Frisbee was on the other. And when we all grew up, you turn on ESPN at three o'clock in the afternoon, you either got some pro wrestling out of Minnesota or Texas, or you got world's strongest man competition. You had no clue who that guy from Switzerland was, but you knew he could carry a lot of weight. Um, I, I think that we've had to adjust because our society has really changed. And, and you know, a lot of people will want to say, you know, at times our society has gotten soft and things like that. You know, I, I think that our game of football has been under attack. Um, you know, not, not to point anything out, but numbers are numbers and stats are stats. You know, there's more ACL and concussion injuries in the game of soccer per capita than there is football. But Hollywood can't sell millions of dollars in movies on soccer. They can on football, though. Um, so I think that's a big part. I think the other part, too, is complacency. Um, we actually had a talk with the team this morning that we want to be able to compliment them. We want to be able to tell them when they're doing good, but they can't become complacent. Because so many times now you get the pat on the back, you say, okay, I'm good. No, you're not good because you performed well in one scrimmage. Let's finish this thing out as a team and keep getting better every day. And that's one thing that's unique about the team we have this year. You know, they're, they're, they're young and experienced hard workers. It doesn't mean we have the talent that we've had in the past, but these guys get better every day and want to come work and they're coachable. Um, so I, I think that's kind of one of the, the major challenges of today is the complacency, the, you know, and I know these coaches face it as well, all the different roles that we have to play. Look, we're in a, we're in a society now to where, you know, we have so many kids that are raised by single parents that are raised by grandparents that are, that truly the village of the community are raising these children. And, um, you know, we just have to keep them at the focus on the, on the task at hand and teach them not to use that as an excuse and and to keep grinding the way they need to in life. Coach Welch, you've been at several different stops, private school, now public schools, small communities, now back in Savannah. You've kind of had to adjust all over. How how difficult is it to make that adjustment as a coach from year to year? I mean, those changes they don't just happen over time. They, they are quick and, and they happen every year, right? Yeah, my, one of the things is, you know, being at Memorial Day and then Savannah High and then going home to Clarkson and then back here uh, to Jenkins, 
uh, it's, it's sort of when I left Savannah High and, and, and went home, it was a situation where I thought because of the small community, the community that I grew up in, that, you know, when you're told to do something, you do it, you know. And uh, getting back there and the, the, the first day, uh, being in the same school I went to, same building, and it's like those kids was no different from the kids that <laughs> were at Savannah High that was at Memorial Day. And now that I'm at Jenkins, they're the same kids. They're just small in number, but they go through the same things. And one thing that, that we always always have to tell my coaches is, you know, uh, for about the last seven years, we've, we've basically uh, been in helmets on Monday and, and Thursdays, and then Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we've pretty much been in top half, even though I tell them to wear girdles. And my thing has been that whatever we can do in full pads, we can do in top pads, but we just want to stay high. So it, it alleviates some of the knee injuries and that kind of thing. And it's been success. It doesn't work for everybody, but it's worked for us. But I think the biggest thing is that at the end of the day, at the end of practice, when uh, uh, it used to be you said a prayer and you moved on. Well, we're now having to encourage our kids to not just make good decisions, but they have to make great decisions. And what I, what I mean by that is that there's so much they're going to enter when they leave us and go home between the stop here and the stop home that they're going to experience. And if they don't know how to accept it or to say yes, say no, move forward, then they're going to end up being in trouble. You know, I was unfortunate while I was at Savannah High. I had uh, uh, one kid that was killed, it was on the team, and two that were shot in the same season. And, you know, and those things, is, it comes back well. I felt so bad one year because I told the kid to go home. And that's when he got killed at home instead of him traveling with us. So those type of things have changed the way I think about, yeah, we're going to always grind football. You know, you're going to spill this an hour. For two hours, two and a half hours in practice and in game day, this an hour. But I tell my coaches, if I don't say it every day, there's somebody that's making this sport possible, whether it's your, your mom, your dad, your foster mom, foster parents, grandparents, aunts, uncle, someone's making it possible. So make sure that every day you tell them that you love them because tomorrow is, tomorrow is not promised. And believe me, as a grandparent, as a parent, you know, you want to hear those things, you know, and I just, you know, it's just trying to make a better kid and make them understand that life is far more than just football. This is a piece that will teach you life skills and life opportunities, but someone's making it possible, you know. So we just need to keep it. I'm not sure the coaches do the same thing. To let them know there's other people that is making this possible. You're just not waking up, coming to school, practicing and playing, and it's happening all about you. There's other people that are making sacrifices. Danny, you've all three of you have played the game for a long time, and I'm sure you would all say that, that the coaches you had were probably the, the tough guys and, and that maybe you've had to adjust your style a little bit. But, Danny, I'll start with you here. Is how, how has that adjustment come? Is it just recognizing the kids or is it just kind of understanding? How do you make those adjustments team to team? Is it something you have to – actively do or does it just kind of happen yeah I think it is something you have to actively make a decision on how you're going to handle things and and then yeah you want it to be natural you want to have relationships with with kids and 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 your coaches and and you know but there has to be things that you make decisions to do and um yeah definitely back to you know my mentors uh Tommy Spangler from Georgia Southern and and he was he was mean as a snake but uh I still I still love him and and honestly I still coach in a very similar fashion um now uh I, I am at Benedictton where it's a military school and you it's a little different you can be a little a little harsher sometimes but you know the game has changed uh and and how you uh, have have to handle things certainly there's 
there's a lot of mothers aren't letting their kids play football anymore, although I think it's the safest it's ever been by a long shot. Uh, one, because of what we're doing as coaches, how we're teaching things, and the equipment. Um, it's just so much better uh, than it was a long time ago. So the game has changed, and we have to deal with it uh, accordingly. But, um, but you can still really push kids. It all comes down. It's just like being a parent. Your kids, the kids will understand if they know you love them. In other words, they don't always like it, but you can be really hard on them and push them hard if they know you love them. And uh, that's the biggest thing, you know, that I think as I've gotten older, uh, I've tried to really do is, is, is let the kids know I love them. And, and I, you know, I do believe I'm going to stand before the good Lord one day and he's not going to ask me about how many games I won or championships. He's going to ask me about each one of these young men that have been put in front of me. Guys, just a couple minutes left here, so we'll keep this one relatively short. If you could make one change to high school football and, and the way it's played and the way it's coached, if you could do it real quick, real simple thing, what would it be? Tony, we'll start with you. Well, I, I really think that, that we're doing it right. Yeah. I know, you know, uh, some of the physicality has been taken away for for – Right reasons, you know, because of concussions and those like things, injuries. I just say we just, you know, we take a look at it. We keep progressing technology-wise. That's going to make us better uh, coaches. We're not being uh, necessarily have to sit down and film room and those type things for five or six hours like we did back in the day. Uh, but there's a piece that um, uh, the people that are making decisions. Uh, if they would just get the coaches involved, you know, that's on the, the high school level, the college level, and especially the head coaches, when decisions are being made, then I think our sport will, will continue to grow and continue to, to, to be a, a well-received program. But I think a lot of times decisions are taken out of the head coaches' hand or the ADs or the coaches and in a small pocket. And I just think uh, – Football is still going to be football. And uh, just to get more input from the people that are at the ground level will, will help keep this game exciting, physical, and entertaining for everybody who loves it. BJ, Danny, real quick, what's one one sentence? If you could make a change, what would it be? Uh, and I'll just say in South Carolina real quick, um, allowing our kids what they have in Georgia is a six or an eight quarter rule. You know, in South Carolina, our kids can only dress for one game or another, JV or varsity. Um, I think it really holds our kids back and their ability to process and to learn. Um, like I know, like if Danny has 150 guys and he has, you know, 70 on JV and 80 on varsity, those JV kids can, unless I'm wrong, coach, those kids can dress for both games. Our guys right. have to pick one or another. So in situations you get injuries and stuff like that, like if, if, if Danny's up on somebody by 50 points, you know, he can put in his JV kids. If, if I'm up by 50, I got to keep my guys in. And now you're putting those guys on li liabilities. So that's something South Carolina's really got to look at. I know obviously Ohio does it, Georgia does it, Texas does it, Florida does it. South Carolina, we got to really answer that, answer that bell. Danny? I don't know that I would necessarily change anything regarding the game right now. The only thing I would like to do is get in front of a lot of the mothers that aren't letting their kids play football because they feel it's not safe. Uh, and I really feel like it is. And if I could get in front of all of them and, and, and really show them what we're doing, they'd realize it's safer than it's ever been. Thanks to Danny Britt, Tony Welch, and BJ Payne for their time. You'll see them on the sidelines this fall, and you can catch all the action from around the Coastal Empire and Low Country every Friday night on the End Zone during V News at 11.